In this video, I would like to determine the derivatives of all the different trig functions there are. So we already know the derivatives of sine and cos. Remember that the derivative of sine is cosine. Maybe I should write that down again. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. But there are other trig functions, right? There's actually six of them. We have sine x, we have cos x, we have tan x as well, right? And we have the reciprocal trig functions. Remember, reciprocal means one over, right? So we have cosecant x, which is defined as one over sine x. So the reciprocal remember the reciprocal means one over something. So the reciprocal of sine x is cosecant x. Um, secant x is another one, and it's the reciprocal of cosine x. And finally, the reciprocal of tangent x is cotan x. We have to know the derivatives of all of these. So we already know the derivative of sine x and cos x. In this video, I would like to calculate the derivatives of these other four functions. And then we should write them down on a piece of paper or memorize them. And that way, we'll just be able to refer to that and use those as formulas instead of having to calculate them every single time. Let's start off with finding the derivative of tan x, OK? Um, you remember that uh, remember that tan x is really equal to sine x over cos x. That's just a trig identity, right? Now, how is this identity going to help us find the derivative of tan x? Well, we can use the quotient rule, right? We just talked about that. So let's see how this is going to go. The derivative of tan x is the same thing as the derivative of sine x over cos x. And let's use the quotient rule to figure that out. So the quotient rule says that to do this derivative, we should first do the derivative of the numerator times the denominator left alone minus the numerator left alone times the derivative of the denominator um, all over the denominator squared. OK, so let's see what this turns out to be. Um, the derivative of sine x, as we know, is cos x. And I'll recopy this cos x, recopy this sine x. And the derivative of cos x here is minus sine x. The derivative is now complete. Let's try to simplify this expression. Well, um, cos times cos is cos squared x. This minus and this minus give us a plus sign. Sine times sine is sine squared x. That's all over cos squared x still. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. That's a very basic trig identity you should know. So I'm going to replace the numerator by the number 1. And we have this. OK. And uh, 1 over cos squared x, well, if, you know, if secant x is 1 over cos x, and I square both sides of this, I see that 1 over cos squared is just equal to secant squared. So we've just discovered a formula for the derivative of tan x, right? The derivative of tan x is secant squared x. Um, I guess I could add that to the top here. So the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. Now, the, obviously, you want to memorize this formula because you don't want to have to go through all these steps every single time you need to find the derivative of tan x, right? So um, we've just completed that. Let's do uh, 
let's do this one next. Let's find the derivative of cosecant x. Why don't we go to a new page there? Let's do the derivative of cosecant x. Um, the way we're going to do that, like we said, is just realize that cosecant x is 1 over sine x. And then we're going to use our quotient rule. This is definitely a quotient, so the quotient rule applies. The quotient rule tells us that to find this derivative, we do the derivative of the numerator times the denominator left alone minus the numerator left alone times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. And um, let's see what this is. The derivative of 1 is a constant, so that's just 0. 1 is a constant, so the derivative of that is 0 times sine x minus 1 times, what's the derivative of sine x? It's cos x. And that's all over sine squared x. I'm just going to get rid of those brackets and put the 2 inside like that. It means the same thing. Um, 0 times sine x is just 0, so that goes away. And 1 times cos x is still cos x. That minus sign is still there, so the numerator just simplifies to minus cos x over sine squared x. Now that's a good answer, but let's clean it up a little bit to make it not have a denominator, okay? Um, we can write it like this. We can write minus out front cos x over sine x and then 1 over sine x. It's the same thing, right? The reason we do that is because then cos over sine is cotan x, right? And 1 over sine x is cosecant x. So there we go. The derivative of cosecant x is minus cotangent times cosecant. Um, I hope you believe me that cos over sine is cotan, right? Um, I'll just quickly show you why that is. You should shouldn't you should know that but we know that tan is sine over cos right so why don't i just put this over one flip both sides take the reciprocal of both sides to get one over tan x is cos x over sine x and one over tan x that's cotan x right by definition and so there we go cotan x is cos x over sine x, okay? So there's the derivative of that. Why don't we see how to do the, the derivative of secant, um, ne secant x next? So the derivative of secant x. Well, we know that secant is really 1 over cos x, right? So let's find this derivative. Now, how about I go just a little bit faster. Instead of writing you know, 1 prime like this, blah, blah, blah. Why don't I just write 0? Because I know the derivative of 1 is 0. So I'll just uh, write right away. I'm just going to, the derivative of 1 is 0 times cos x left alone minus 1 left alone. And instead of writing cos x prime and then doing the derivative on the next step, why don't I just write it down right now? I know the derivative of cos x. It's minus sine x. And the bottom is squared, the square of cosine. So the derivative is done. Why don't we clean it up a little bit? 0 times cos x uh, just goes away because it's 0. This minus and this minus become a plus. So we have sine x over cos squared x. Let's clean this up a little bit, kind of make it uh, a little bit uh, cleaner. So we can write it in brackets, just kind of similar style as we did before. Okay. Sine x over cos x is tan x. And 1 over cos x is secant x. So that's the formula for the derivative of secant x. Let's do the last one, which is finding the derivative of cotan x. Now, we actually have two choices here. We can replace cotan x by cos x over sine x, or we could do 1 over tan x and use the formula we got for the derivative of tan x. Um, which one do I want to do? How about we just... 
I find I think that it would be easier to do the one over tan x. So I'm going to do the harder one just for practice. Okay. Let's write it as cos x over sine x. We just explained a second ago of why that's true. Why it's true that cotan x is the same as cos over sine. And let's see how this derivative goes. The derivative of cosine, instead of writing cos x prime, I'm just going to go straight to the derivative. The derivative of cos x is minus sine x times the denominator left alone. I'm using quotient re here, rule here, right? I hope you know that. Um, now I'm going to leave the numerator alone and times the derivative of the bottom there, which is cos x, all over the bottom squared. Okay, um, minus sine times sine is minus sine squared. Minus cos times cos is cos squared. And that's all over sine squared x. Let's factor out a negative here, okay? So we got sine squared x plus cos squared x. And that's all over sine squared x. And we're going to use our basic fundamental trig identity that sine squared x plus cos squared x is just the number 1. So we have minus 1 over sine squared x. And this is the same as, um, do you agree it's minus cosecant squared? Uh, how do you see that? I guess I'll, I'll provide some detail on that. I can write it like this, right? Same thing. And 1 over sine x, we know that's cosecant squared x, right? So we have this. And why don't I write the 2 inside here just to get rid of those unnecessary brackets. So there we go. That's the formula for cotan x, all right? So why don't we just summarize all the derivatives of the trig functions on the on one page here? So you really need to memorize or write these down on a piece of paper. We're going to write down all six of those trig derivatives, okay? The derivative of sine x as we saw is cos x. The derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, and the derivative of tan x, we proved that that's equal to secant squared x, and how about the derivative of cosecant x? That was minus cosecant x cotan x. The derivative of secant x was secant x tan x. And finally, the derivative of cotan x was minus cosecant squared x. So you, you don't want to have to rederive these formulas every single time. So you kind of need to memorize these or write them down on a formula sheet and refer to them whenever you come to those kind of derivatives. Especially tan x, that comes up a lot. You need to know that secant squared x. Why don't we just do a little example to see how this goes. Let's say we have, I don't know, let's say we have to find the derivative of, um, let's just keep, keep it simple. Let's just say tan x um, plus cotan x. How do we do the derivative of that? Well, this is a sum. So we do the derivative of the first plus the derivative of the second. And the derivative of tangent is secant squared x, according to our formulas. And the derivative of cotan x is minus cosecant squared. Instead of writing plus minus cosecant squared, why don't I just write minus cosecant squared? It's the same thing, and it looks a little bit nicer. So there's an example, a little small example of... Uh, how we use these formulas to find derivatives. All right, so these derivatives have to be added to your toolkit, tool kit, and um, it's uh, really just a matter of memorizing them or writing them down and referring to them whenever you need them. All right, that's the end of this video.